Praise be to Allah and with the barakah of this great night such an amal, such a deed Alhamdulillah a very azim amal it is that Allah Ta'ala may He give us the tawfiq the ability to implement it because there's a lot of benefit in that amal, in that deed and that deed is such an action that we cannot implement that action in any other part of the year. And there are lots of rewards attached to this amal. And that amal, if we can implement it, we can only implement it in Dhul Hajjah, Dhul Hijjah, and in these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So this is such a great deed, such a big deed, that a man will be surprised and amazed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... For us people, for us, He has created such easy paths and modes to be saved from hellfire and to reach into paradise. If we think for a while, if we think, then we really are foolish people. We are extremely foolish people. We will get to that conclusion that Allah Ta'ala's rahmah and mercy is coming to us. And... If this is the case, which it is, then nobody should go to Jahannam. Nobody should be going to hellfire. Allah Ta'ala has opened so many doors and, and paths. But shaitan and nafs is such a weird you know, effect of theirs that they control us, they overwhelm us, they overpower us. We should do dua to Allah, we should pray to Allah that Allah save us from nafs, the base desires and shaitan. Because life is passing by with speed, fast. And the grave is getting closer day by day. And within this situation, the issues are increasing day by day. Everything, we have complications, we have issues in the lives. Oh, this is difficult, this is not easy, I can't do this. And all of the paths that lead, paths that lead to hellfire, they seem easy to us. Now look here. These ten nights, not one, not two, not three, total ten days and ten nights Allah Ta'ala has given to us. Yes, and so azim are they that some ulama ikram have stated, the respected scholars have stated that these first 10 days, this first ashra of Dhul Hijjah, this is greater and better than the last ashra, the last 10 days of Ramadan. Some, some of the scholars have stated this. This is such a great statement. Why? This is a reality because there are so many hikmas, so many wisdoms of Allah within this first ashra of Dhul Hijjah. So much fadl and grace of Allah that me and you today, we should do one thing differently today with an honest heart. From the depths of heart that Allah, we are not going to sin. That's it. Everybody knows what sins we each commit. We all know the sins we commit. So let's do honest repentance from the sins. Because if we don't repent from our sins, let me tell you, if we don't repent from our sins, we cannot be saved from hellfire. Because the second name of sin is Jahannam. Yeah? Sin equals hellfire. And ibadat, worship, will not take us away from Jahannam. If we leave the sins, we will be saved from Jahannam. Even if there's a small, so-called small sin equivalent to a speck of dust, then due to that sin, I cannot go into paradise. First, that sin will be burnt in hellfire. And then I can go into paradise. Only then. So this situation is dangerous. It's dangerous balancing on a dangerous pedestal. We do ibadat, we do dhikr, we keep fast, we do worship in the night, etc. But still we attach ourselves to the sins. Think, think. Then hellfire comes back. So what is the meaning of sin? Sin equals hellfire. No such thing as small sin. Because even any sin will accrue hellfire. It will burn. It will burn us. So what's the benefit? Oh, I've prayed Salah. I've done this action. I've fasted. Fine. And you will get the ajr for this. I will get the ajr for this. Definitely we will get the ajr for Salah, for Tahajjud, for the fast that we've kept. We'll get the ajr, the rule. But the ajr will come after. First, it will be cleaned in it, the sin. 
the sin will be purified where? In Jahannam first. Then the reward for that deed will come. So Jahannam first, then paradise. So why don't we do this? Then let's make a solid pact today. Then let's get rid of this sinning, the sinful life. Allah, get us away from the action of sins. So to leave the sins is easier than ibadat. I tell you this now. To leave the sins is easier than worshipping. And you need one thing to leave the sins. What is that? One thing. We don't need to have wudu, ablution. We don't need to be in the state of ablution. We don't need to be in Makkatul Mukarrama. We don't need anything else. We just need one thing. We need courage. Yeah? We need a bit of determination, a bit of power behind our conviction. We need conviction. MashaAllah, Allah Ta'ala has made us as human beings. Alhamdulillah, we can oppose everything. Today, in, we see, even if a lion comes, we oppose the lion. Even if it's an elephant, we try to control it. And what is there in the world, the creatures that are not under our control? We are in the skies, we have uh, ships on the seas, we have controlled the skies with the planes, etc. But we can't leave the sin. Despite all this, we can't oppose the sin, we can't fight sinning. And so much loss of, due to one sin that's straight into hellfire. Tell me, tell me. So today we have to make this decision, my brothers. Today, that we have to detach ourselves from the sins. That today, what are we going to do for this? We're going to have courage and determination. We promise that Allah from today will see. But I'm doing tawbah. I will do true, honest tawbah. And you also, brothers, do true, honest tawbah. Let's repent together. That look, I might not have a chance after that. And if I tell you one action, and this action you will not get for the rest of the year, the, what will we get from this deed that I'm going to explain to you now? If you, me, if we've got a better sense than with happiness, we'll be, we'd be mad with happiness if we know about this deed and the rewards of this deed. What is the treasure that Allah Ta'ala has put within this deed? So let's start. What's the rewards of this deed if we, act, if we carry out this deed? The first will be the baraka in the age. What will they be? Due to this deed, there will be baraka in the age. There will be increase in wealth. Increase and multiplication of wealth. So that's number two. Number three, the protection of your whole family from shaitan, illness, jinn and evil and bad things, bad effects. So this is a weak point, isn't it, in our life? First, baraka in our age. Imagine what is baraka. Baraka is that without any illness and with prostration and ruku, you will pass your life. Baraka, this is called baraka. So this is the baraka. No, baraka isn't that uh, your age will increase and you'll be a gangster. No. Age will increase, but you will be old and you'll be standing and you'll be doing sujood. And you'll have the youthful exuberance, you'll have the youthful energy that Allah Ta'ala will baraka into your life. Yeah? So that's number one. You understand baraka? I won't go into the shri commentary, lengthy. I'll just give you the summary of each point. So the reward of this deed, if we do this deed, I'm going to explain. Number one, baraka in, in age and increase in multiplication in wealth. Lots of wealth. One sahabi was given a dua, prayer, for wealth and for children. Hazrat Anas radiyallahu anhu states that I, subhanallah, that when my wealth was distributed after my death, all of the inheritance was distributed, even then so much wealth was left that there were mounds of gold that had to be broken down. Subhanallah, gold. Hazrat Anas Radhanu's wealth, his inheritance that was distributed after his death, was so much because behind him was the dua of Rasul Sam. Rasul Sam did dua that Allah give him mal and give him offspring. So here, Allah Ta'ala says, due to this deed, you'll have barakah in your age, you'll have increase in wealth, multiplication wealth. Third point is the protection of our families. We all want protection of our families, don't we? Who doesn't love their children and the wife? You love your wife and children, don't you? You run around all day for them, all day, all night. For their name, for their sake, we run. So Allah says, I'll protect your children, family, and your wife and your family. So first three rewards I've mentioned. What great, fantastic rewards eh, for this action. Now ne next, fourth that the sins will be wiped away. Subhanallah. Sins, look at the barakah of this deed, that your sins will be wiped away. And fifth, the mounds and stacks of good deeds. When you say subhanallah, subhanallah. So, barakah in age, increase in wealth, barakah in wealth, multiplication of wealth, point two. Third, protection of the family. Fourth, the sins will be wiped away. And fifth, increase in good deeds. Because we're going to die, aren't we? And so sixth, that at the time of death, very easy death. Subhanallah. Say it loudly, subhanallah on each point. Yeah? So we're passing away. And the world is there. And at the time of death, 
the time of death, beautiful, easy death without any pain. Just like you are pulling out a hair from the flower, your ruh will be extracted without any pain. Next point, that what comes after that, the grave. And soon as you're lying into the grave, there will be light, illumination. So mana, soon as you're lowered into the grave, illumination. Yes, so after that, where will we go? The plain of Hashar. And then the Allah Ta'ala has given the sketch for the plain of Hashar that at the day of Hashar, your Mizan scale will be increased with the good deeds. Subhanallah. Are you having yaqeen certainty on these points? Subhanallah, this is the karam of mercy, grace of Allah. When it opens, it opens such. And due to what? Just one deed that we're going to discuss. What will happen? The Mizan, your scale will be filled with the deeds and then... Allahu Akbar, that hellfire will be made very far from you. You won't even know where's hellfire. This finished. There's no hellfire for that person. And what after that? Jannah. Allah Ta'ala doesn't say you will be given just paradise, but you will have Jannah. But Allah says, I will give you elevation, increase in the rank and stages of your level in paradise. And they will be increased and multiplied. Total 10 rewards due to what? One amal that we're going to discuss. When can we do this amal? Only in this stage of the year, this phase, no other month. Only in these first 10 days. After these 10 days of Dhul Hajjah, we can't do this deed. So brothers, we're sitting here. This is Allah's grace and fadl and blessings that we cannot oppose this ni'mah Allah has given to us. I don't know how Allah Ta'ala has brought us here to His home, sat us down, how this program was set, how this schedule was made, how I said we're going to do this. And the people said, yeah, you can come and do dhikr. And we have come and sat here. This is Allah Ta'ala's ni'mah for us. Azim. And look what we'll take from here in these 10 days. Look. Imagine, what is this amal? What is this deed? Tell me. Tell me. That due to this deed, that's why if it's said to you that all night long you have to stay awake for this deed, and everyone will stay up, and after staying up, if you don't move an inch from your prayer mat, if it's said, then maybe some people run from the back, but still, lots of people, mashal, will stand or stay up all night to get these words. Very easy amal though. It's not as hard as even that. What is that amal? What is that deed? Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you? Will you implement it? First I ask you, will you implement it? Yes, good. So, look at the point I've brought out today. What a precious pearl I've brought here today. Jewel, you should invite me to a feast for this. Subhanallah. So, the person who does this amal, he will get these 10 great rewards that we just discussed, that there's nothing that can oppose these, these rewards. What is this amal? Nothing. Just Allah Ta'ala says that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are so beloved to me. So beloved to me, that us coming to the masjid, and we sitting and doing dhikr, and doing ibadat, and all day long we do tasbih, and we do the worship, the dhikr that we've been prescribed, and to pray salah, and do the deeds in these 10 days. So great these actions will be in these 10 days, and so beloved are these 10 days to Allah. Allah Ta'ala says, that these 10 rewards I will give to you, to every man and woman, to every believer, who who in these 10 days, in this first after of Dhul Hijjah, respects and honors these 10 days. What is the amal? That's it. Just a small deed, but a great reward. That these ter- first 10 days of Dhul Hajj, the first 10 days and nights, the servant of Allah who respects these 10 days and nights, who honors these 10 days and nights, who reveres them and has manners in these 10 days and nights, Allah Ta'ala says, I will give you these 10 rewards that we just mentioned. Aha, so what we realize here is that 10 days and there are 10 rewards. So maybe it's such that each day has a separate reward out of the 10, isn't it? Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah. So now, what do we have here? What's the scenario? How do we respect then this first ashra of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days? It's obvious, what is manners? For example, if I say, please have respect for this person, how will you respect that person? If he comes, you'll stand for him maybe, you'll have adab, manners, salam, or will you swear at that person? Will you abuse that person? If you abuse somebody, say bad to someone, is that respecting that person or disrespecting that person? Obviously, you're disrespecting that person. So we have to respect these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. We cannot disrespect, and it's not linked to worship this. No, no, if you're praying, tahajjud, you're respecting these 10 days. No, got no link with um, uh, worship. Manners and respect and reverence has nothing to do with the worship in these 10 days. What is the respect for these 10 days of Dhul Hajjah? Then this month and these days and these nights, don't commit one sin. That's the respect, reverence and honor for these first 10 days and nights. That's it. The person in these first 10 days and nights of the religion, if you predict his eyes and hands and tongue and eyesight and visibility and body and mind, saves all of these things from sin. It's not hard, is it? If we save these, all our organs and limbs and our bodies from sin, Allah Ta'ala says, I will give you 10 rewards. If you do that in the first 10 days of the Hajjah. So on every step, is this a sin? I have to ask myself, if this is a sin, step back. That's it. 
Ask yourself the question. Every moment, every second. In these 10 days and nights, ask yourself a question. With ease, you will pass these 10 days. It hasn't been said that you have to pray tahajjud. No. What do you have to do? Just don't sin in these first 10 days and nights. That's it. Whatever is sinning, an action that's related to sin, that's it. It doesn't matter if it's big, small, minor, medium. No. Is it a sin? Does this equal a sin? No. I have to avoid it. Allah Ta'ala is making a salad. And if you elevate these 10 days and nights, taqaddus and respect, such a great month, dhul hijjah, such a great reward Allah Ta'ala is giving for respecting these 10 days and nights. And not just this, that we've sinned and we do talk, but no, I'm not going to sin in these 10 days and nights. That's it. With an honest heart, make a promise with an honest heart. That, that's why we come for dhikr. Allah, we are remembering you. And three days have passed, we didn't know about this hadith. So we can't say anything about the first three days. But your rahmah mercy, if it's going to carry on further after the next seven days, then maybe the, the two nights that pass and this third night we're sitting in, Allah will include it in that as well. So now we have to try that after today and the rest of the life as well, not just for these ten. But in these ten days and nights, not one moment or instance will occur. Total caution, we will leave the sins. Doesn't matter if we have to leave meeting people or speaking to people or, or having meeting people. Close your hands, your mouths, your eyes, whatever. Control yourself as much as you can. That in these ten days and nights, we're going to do every, we're going to fast from everything. Our eyesight, our tongue, our hand, our body, our mind, our soul. Consider that everything's fasting. I'm not doing nothing. Someone's swearing at me, abusing me. Doesn't matter what person's saying. I need to get to my destination in these 10 days and nights I've got to get these rewards these 10 rewards so we have to strive for this make effort for this and with the barakah of this night inshallah great points are coming with the barakah of these nights so let Allah, may Allah give us all the tawfiq to do amal on this and we, today we will repent the, the sins we've committed and the sins of the soul of the desires there's no excuse there's no forcing anyone to do a sin there's nothing like this but the point here is that whatever sin there is man and woman Whoever's listening, and women, they know what's happening. The women know what the sins are, the men know what the sins are. Everybody knows what each person says. In these 10 days, get yourself together. Pull yourself together. Lock yourself in the room. That Allah, to save myself from the sins, if I have to even lock myself in the room, then I'm going to do that. That even for me to leave the house, if I have to sin, then I'm going to leave going out. If I, by meeting this person, I commit sins, then I'll stop meeting this person. If this job is giving me the sins, then 10 days I'll take a uh, holiday and not sin. If due to this job uh, or this this action gives me a sin, then I'll stop this action for and then inshallah with the fadl of Allah these 10 days if they pass like this then Allah Ta'ala will give us ease and courage for the rest of our life to save ourselves from the sins Amen.